Cervical cancer is one of the common cancers in the woman. It is the second most common after the breast. Uh, it is one of the preventable cancer. Generally, the HPV vaccination and the cervical screening methods can almost offer like 100% protection against this cancer. So making sure that you get your smear test, making sure your, you get your vaccination. Today video is directed upon how and what we can do to make our chances of cervical cancer less. I am Dr. Shilpa. I am consultant gynecologist at Harley's Clinic at Mumbai. Uh, in today's video, we are going to discuss about what causes cervical cancer, what are the screening tests and what we can do to prevent it. So let us first understand what is the cervical cancer. Basically, the cancer of the mouth of the uterus, we call that as a cervix. Cancer is any abnormal growth that can invade the other body parts would be called as cervical cancer now. In the usual screening test, when we talk about a screening test, we talk about any way in which we are able to detect it at a um, at an earlier stage at a precancerous lesion rather than when it becomes a cancer. Always we have heard cancer prevention is always better than cure. Preventing it also is one of the things that we should do. Now, how is pap smear done? Pap smear or a smear test, if we can call it. It is that we do an internal checkup. We put our speculum inside. Uh, take the few cells in a, with the help of a cyto brush and send those tissues for testing. The report usually takes a day to three days and it mentions about uh, how is the cells of the cervix, whether they are normal, they are, there is inflammation, they are LSIL, they are low grade or a high grade abnormality. How frequent we should get it done? Pap smear according to the latest guideline, it has to be done every three yearly. We can somehow combine HPV also with the pap smear. I am going to talk about HPV in detail in a few minutes. The uh, cervical uh, pap smear when we take, there are uh, few exceptions for which they would not follow three year plan. Certain people who have immunocompromised status, certain people who have already been having some cervical issues, certain people who have um, on being uh, medications, certain like immunocompromised, they require uh, more frequent pap smear. I see a lot of people uh, coming for the um, inquiry, do the virgins need a pap smear? See, if you can put a menstrual cup, if you can put a tampon inside, pap smear test is almost like that. It is a test which should be offered to every woman who's more than 21 uh, years of age to a every three year method. If a lady is not comfortable by a, for an internal checkup, then we really, you know, consider. But otherwise, it's not that if she's virgin, she cannot have a pap smear. Now, I want to say a um, few words upon HPV. Now, 99% of cervical cancers are caused by human papilloma virus. Human papilloma virus, they are a group of virus, which are more than 200 strains are there. Few of them are low risk, few of them are high risk. Low risk uh, HPV causes warts. They are cauliflower like growths. They do not usually have symptoms. They are kind of a disfiguring thing which happens. They spread by contact and usually what we see in the practice is the warts which are in the vagina, which are around the vagina. Boys do have HPV infection. They come with penile warts very commonly. Now high risk HPV would cause cervical cancer. We have high risk HPV like 16, 18. 30s and 30s, 35, there are, there are a lot of HPVs which are high risk HPV. Mostly 16 and 19 bear 70% of the load of HPV. Now this HPV starts when gets into the system, starts the abnormal growth from low risk, low changes which are present, they become high risk changes and ultimately lead to cervical cancer. Average time period to develop a cervical cancer would be somewhere like 5 years to 8 years to 10 years. 
So doing the screening test, if we can detect at precancerous lesion, we can treat them as well. When we talk about vaccine, now the prevention is a very important part. HPV vaccination is prevention for cervical cancer also. Uh, the types of vaccines we have, we have three types of vaccines now. First were bivalent vaccine, second were the uh, quadrivalent and now new vaccine this year has been launched which is 9-valent, nanovalent it is, uh, again called by Gardasil 9. So we have Cervix which is uh, bivalent, Gardasil 4 and Gardasil 9. All these vaccines prevent mostly 16 and 18 strain of virus which uh, is an important uh, virus, cervical cancer is a part of it. In this vaccine, they are usually for Gardasil 4 and Gardasil 9, uh, three dose regimen is uh, uh, what we follow. It has to be used at 0, 2 and 6 months. 0 being the first uh, inoculation time that we consider from. Now, to decide which is the best vaccine for you, generally the availability of the vaccine whether you have been infected previously with any sort of a virus, what is the age that we are vaccinating, all that becomes an important, uh, important questions to be answered to choose which is the best, best vaccine for you. Now, when we talk about what is the right age for HPV vaccination, uh, vaccine should be given uh, ideally from 9 to 15 years of age. Two doses have to be followed in this time. Before any sexual intimacy has started, all the boys, all the girls of this age should be vaccinated so that the prevalence of the HPV in the general society also decrease. The doses schedule I have talked to you. In the doses schedule, uh, we have 0, 2 and 6 for anybody who is more than 15. And uh, for a lady less than, uh, for a girl or a boy, Less than 13, it is only two doses given at six months interval. What will happen if you miss a dose? If you miss a dose, please remember to take it as soon as you get, you remember you have to. The vaccine usually is intramuscular uh, inoculated, maybe the upper um, arm or in the thighs, depending upon where you want. But these two are uh, good places where we usually put the vaccine. Are there any side effects of the vaccination? Yes, side effects of the vaccination, like all the vaccination, they are very minimal. By, by large, the vaccination um, side effects are minimal. Some people can have dizziness, some people can have irritation, tingling on the site of inoculation. By large, the vaccine is pretty safe. We commonly use it in the practice. Who should not get vaccination? So now, people who are trying to get pregnant, People who are already pregnant are not the candidates for vaccination. Next would be, what if you are already sexually active? See, ideal time of inoculation of vaccine is before you become sexually active. But there won't be any harm if you take the vaccine after that. Correct? So as you get to know is the time you should take a vaccine. Do you need a vaccine even if you had a regular pap test? So pap smear and vaccination are combined. They cannot replace each other. In spite of having the vaccination, pap smear should be done. In spite of having a pap smear, vaccination should be done. So both of, both of these things should work in coordination with each other. So where can you get the vaccine? Mostly uh, all the doctors, uh, sometimes even in the pediatric unit, they are storing the vaccination. You can ask and you can... Uh, for the vaccination, you can ask your healthcare provider. Generally, even the pediatric people are keeping the vaccine. So now the other thing is, do the boys also need the vaccine? See, the, it is a sexually shared infection. So if it happens from boys to girls, that's why even the boys need the vaccination. And we do not have the test for the boys. So pap smear is available for the girls. For boys, we do not have a test. So they really need the vaccination as well. So I hope uh, I have answered most of your questions related to pap smear and vaccination. I hope that the video must have answered a lot of your questions regarding vaccination and cervical cancer. If you would like me to post more videos, please like and subscribe to my channel.
Also, don't forget to post your questions and queries in the comment box below. Thank you.